What I want to talk about is probably one of the biggest issues that I see when it comes to dieting and trying to lose weight. We're in a situation now where over the last year with the quarantine, a lot of people have put on quite a bit of weight. There's a number of different studies out recently and I'm sure there'll be more to follow, but it does show that the average person has gained quite a bit of weight, way more than an average year. Now, a lot of people are saying, well, yeah, not surprising. We've all been locked up for a year. And clearly things like comfort food, the sales of that has increased. Also unhealthy habits, things like alcohol, etc., consumption has increased. And a lack of exercise as well. So on average, people have been exercising 50% less. So obviously more of the wrong type of foods, more unhealthy behaviors and less exercise. So it's probably not surprising to anybody watching this that in the last year, and the research is now supporting this, that people have gained quite a bit of weight. So now that that's happened, what are we going to do? There's, of course, going to be a barrage of people trying to lose that weight. I think there's going to be so many things advertised and on the market. Now, the problem is, and you may or may not be shocked to hear this, but most people who try to lose weight will fail. In fact, there's so many studies to show that the average person that goes on a diet, a year later, not only do they not lose any weight, if they lost a little bit of weight in the short term, one to five years afterwards, they will regain that weight and extra. So even in, the, in one study in UCLA, the researchers said, don't go on a diet. So that's not a good start. And another study with 175,000 people, monitored them over nine years, and they're all trying to lose weight, these people who are obese, and some of them even morbidly obese. And they found that for men, only one in 200, and for women, one in 170, managed to get back to a normal weight. That's a disaster. And even if they just lost a certain amount, like say 5%, again, you're only talking about 10, 15% of people succeeded. People who are morbidly obese, it was much worse than that. You're talking about one in 1,000. And that study was done in 2015 in the UK. So unfortunately, when I see the situation that we're in, and now people are gonna put in a lot of effort to try to get back into shape. And because I've got the history of information and we know, people are just not gonna succeed. Maybe they'll, they'll lose a little bit of the weight gain in the last year, but most of it they will never lose. And that's not a good situation. So why do we fail? Well, when most people try to lose weight, they're gonna try and cut back on what they eat, essentially starving themselves. And then they may do some extra exercise to try to burn off calories. The problem is with starving yourself and exhausting yourself, that can actually have a very negative effect on your metabolism. And it doesn't address the number one issue of why people will not succeed long-term. Because if you think about it, if you go on a starvation diet, so you're hungry all the time, and maybe even be exhausted as well. Um, that takes a lot of willpower, and people will put a lot of their willpower into this. Like, I really wanna lose this weight, and they'll be motivated. But how long can you do that for? Maybe a few weeks, maybe even a few months. But that's why long-term people will not succeed using that process. So that is the big problem. They completely go about it the wrong way, and they're not gonna succeed. So now for the exciting part. This is the answer of how to make this really work for you and how to be successful and not fall into that problem. Really what you have already inside you is a mechanism that tells you when to eat and when not to eat. And when that's working, it works amazingly. It works for thousands of years. If you think about it, before we even knew what calories were, we were all in great shape before the obesity epidemic. And it's only with the processed foods and weird environments that we're in that's thrown that out. So how do you get that back working for you? Because it's much easier to lose weight if you're not hungry. If you feel full and satisfied, well then it's gonna be much easier to lose the weight. And of course, then you're gonna be able to keep it off long-term. So I'm gonna give you some really good steps to take to make sure you're gonna benefit from this. So the first thing I'm gonna recommend is increasing the amount of protein that you take. So when you look at the different types of food, protein is the most satiating. Now the great thing is when you increase the amount of protein that you take, you will feel fuller and automatically, even without trying, and there's a great study that shows that when you increase your protein intake, in this particular study, they increased to 30% of their overall intake, the average person had 441 less calories a day, again, without trying. These are the ones I love. 
The second thing that you can do that has a really good effect is increase the amount of fiber that you take. So fiber, when you take it in, expands in your stomach and sends a signal saying, hey, I'm full. And you can obviously increase, which I do recommend, the fiber in your food, and that will be very beneficial, especially if it's good quality fiber that's good for your microbiome. But you could just even take a fiber like uh, glucomannan or psyllium husk or whatever type of fiber 30 to 60 minutes before each meal, you're going to feel much fuller. So it's a little bit like getting your stomach stapled because you're going to feel fuller on less and it costs a lot less too. So maybe try that one first. And then the third thing that I recommend is watch the different flavors of food because this is an interesting one that the research shows is that when you mix too many flavors together, and unfortunately that's the problem with the ultra processed food, they will literally do this on purpose. It tricks your brain into overeating, which is probably one of the main causes of the obesity epidemic in the first place. So, for example, when they did this study, they found that when you just took food without any flavor at all, so they did this just with water with all the nutrients in it, um, and they gave it to people, people would feel full. And if they were overweight, they would consume only a small fraction of the calories and they would lose a lot of weight very, very quickly. So from a practical point of view, when you look at your food, try to keep to just one or two food categories. So, so say if you just have protein and vegetables, well then that's great. When you start adding in too many or adding in a new flavor, it literally tricks the brain and say, hey, I'm hungry all over again. So for example, people that want to gain weight, they use this on purpose. So in a hot dog eating contest, they'll eat, but then they'll feel full, but they want to try and eat more. They'll have a little bit of lemonade or ice cream on the side. That will reset their hunger and then they can go and eat more. So don't do that if you're going to try and lose weight. And then the last thing that I'll say, and this is a really good trick as well, again, understand that protein is the most satiating. When you're eating your meal, the order that you eat your meal in will play a big role, even if you eat the same amount of food. But in general, what happens if you eat the protein and the vegetables first, and then something like the starch afterwards? First of all, even if you ate all the starch and you compared it, your blood sugar will be 50% less, which is a great benefit. But but also you'll be more, feel more full and you won't eat as much. So there's a few steps to get you started and they really do work very well. And again, it's gonna to lead to not only easier losing weight, but long-term success. And I really hope this message in whatever way gets out there because so many people are gonna put a lot of effort in. And unfortunately what happens is it doesn't work. They just think it's down to, oh, I don't have enough willpower. They blame themselves and then it makes it harder and harder. Um, and that's a disaster. I really don't wanna see that happening. So please use the information, get great results and share it with your friends. If you need any further information, you can visit www.futurewellness.com. If you would like further help in terms of achieving your goals, whether it's health, shape, weight loss, fitness, etc., we have an amazing program that's completely customized for you. You get your very own health coach that you interact with all the time. You get a personalized exercise program based on whatever equipment that you have based on your goals. Also your own nutrition plan and lifestyle help as well. Please check out www.futurewellness.com.